Hey everyone, welcome back to Real Talk with Joe and Dina. And we are super excited to be able to have here as our in-studio guest, Caitlin Santiago. How are you doing today? I'm good, hello, how are you? Doing well, doing well. So, well, you know, we always want to be able to, you know, Dean and I always want to be able to have uh, individuals that are truly have a, a, just a very inspirational story behind them. And, uh, you know, obviously you're part of La Rosa CW Properties. Yes. And so uh, we're very excited to have you within our La Rosa family. But can you just tell our audience a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got into real estate and kind of just let everyone know kind of what you do today? Um, well, I'm a mom. Um, I was previously married. Um, I went through a rough divorce and decided that I wanted to provide a life for my children um, without having to rely on somebody else and take on the independent single mom role. Right. Um, and I wanted to give my children the best, which inspired me. So I was in school for paralegal studies. Um, so I got some good negotiation background skills, education. Um, and then I went on to work for American Builder Supply. So I had built a relationship with the builders there. Um, and I led a team uh, as a team leader doing uh, picking packages basically for builders. Um, and so that kind of put my foot into the real estate industry, um, learning what it takes to do new construction. Um, and then I was working late hours. Uh, my in-laws are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, they helped me out with picking up my kids. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to be there for sports. I wasn't able to be there. Um, my middle daughter got sick. I went through some health issues. Um, and I wanted to kind of outweigh all of that and just do what I could to be present. Real estate, um, as everybody gets into it, thinks you can really have a flexible schedule. Yeah. Um, but it's very demanding. Absolutely. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> as we all know. Yes. Um, it can be flexible depending on how motivated you are. Right, and right. That's what you want to be. So you want to really work with your clients and kind of uh, work around your children and your families. And um, I think it takes a lot to be um, active in your family, but also strong in your career. Um, a lot of time blocking, managing, um, stuff like that. So anyways, um, I kind of worked through that, built my relationship in the real estate industry, took off with it. And so when um, exactly did you get in the real? So when did you actually say, you know what, I'm going to like, like what you said earlier, I'm going to stop working for somebody else. And I'm going to go out there and be, you know, independent. When, when I couldn't make it to my kids on time yeah. every night, my mother-in-law was like, uh, or my father-in-law really, he would go, I had to pick up my kids by six o'clock and I wasn't making it until seven to get to my kids. Yeah. Um, I stood back in the office to pick up the team leader role um, to make sure that everything was completed. I always give my best efforts. Um, and when I couldn't make it out there on time and my father-in-law was like, are you going to be at, you know, dance? Are you going to be at softball? Are you going to be at anything for your kids? You know? Um, and I really wanted to be a hands-on mom. So yeah. I was like, how did you take that when, when, I mean, it hurt. It, yeah. yeah, it hurt. I was like, somebody else is raising my kids. The yeah. kids are always in daycare, um, late at daycare. My in-laws are, you know, stepping in to take on that role. And my in-laws aren't meant to be parents. They're sure. meant to be grandparents. So right. I wanted to be there, um, for my children. And I was like, mm, we're going to push through this. We're going to make it work. I'm going to do what it takes. Um, when I went to go take my state boards test, I failed three times. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I didn't want to give up. Yeah. I didn't want to quit. I wanted to keep going. So um, I actually took the class twice. I took it once with Watson and once with Climber Real Estate. Yeah. Um, I love the Climber, yeah. Yeah, I love Climber. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, but it was my second time around at Climber where I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make this work. Sure. I'm going to do what it takes. So I just kept pushing through. And I, I usually tell people, I don't take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have the answer, you find the answer. You yeah. know, use your resources around you. It's important to surround yourself um, with people. Uh, I once heard when you walk into a room and there's, you know, like Legacy Summit, there's tons of tables, there's tons of people there. Don't sit at the table that you're comfortable at. Sit at the table that you're not comfortable Absolutely. at. Put yourself with the wiser people so that you can learn something. Yeah. Every moment's um, an opportunity to learn something and yeah. to grow. I keep pushing through. Yeah. So I love I love how you being very transparent about your process of getting your license. I actually she always cringes when I was tell the story, but I actually failed five times. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> I failed five okay. times. And so the story I'd always you know tell people was, hey, listen, you know what? It just showed that I wasn't a quitter. Right. And you know I was committed, and I was you know I was a police officer before, and so real estate was a completely like different uh, field for me obviously understanding the real estate jargon like what's what's an easement what's escrow what's all this stuff mm -hmm. so i had a difficult time but 
But think oh, about if you didn't push those five times, look at what you've built. Yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. And exactly the same thing for you. It's like, yeah, you yeah. know, you're three million plus producer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. So, so how many kids do you have? Three. 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 And ages? I have a 12-year-old, 9-year-old, and 3-year-old. My 3-year-old is my son. He's my tornado. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my 12-year-old. <laughs> right. 100% um, boy. Um, my 12-year-old, uh, she went through a lot of health struggles. Um, she's actually autistic, so I always support all the, the autism stuff in our right. real estate industry. I love that we get to Im you know implement a lot of our community organization stuff right. um, into our career. Um, so yeah, so she, she faces a lot every day. And then my 12 year old is my, uh, star athlete. She does softball. She plays rec ball. Um, she does conditioning. She does, uh, personal training and she does, uh, travel ball team. Yeah. She just played, awesome. she just represented the 12 year olds, um, at the state level for, uh, pitching in the all-stars. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So you went from working for, for, for somebody else and having to work crazy hours mm -hmm. and you know not always then being there for your kids but probably there's a lot of folks out there that are listening that that are in real estate they're the realtors or they're in the real estate field they got to be probably asking themselves well gosh isn't getting into real estate also going to require some crazy hours so how, how do you find the balance now how did you kind of set the rules in essence so that you can be there for your kids uh one of the things that i do as a real estate is i listen to a lot of motivational videos les brown is one of my favorites yeah, um one of the things that he says is when you fall down, try to land on your back because if you're looking up, you can always get up. So being at the point in my life where I was a mother and I couldn't be there for my kids, I was I felt like I was on my back. I was like, no, I want to be there. You know, I want to do this. So I took that advice and I was like, you know what? I'm facing up. I'm going to I'm going to push through. I'm going to make it happen. Um, and. My, I saw other parents, you know, you, social media is huge. Right. You see other parents and they're like, oh, I'm doing this with my kids and I'm doing that with my kids. I felt like I was in an office closed up, um, yeah. sun up to sun down. Right. And you see that and you're like, man, like grass isn't always greener on the other side, but it takes effort to get there. It takes money to make money, people say. Yeah. Um, so I felt like I'm at the bottom. I'm going to invest this time into what I want to do to succeed. And you have to want it. If you don't want it, you you can't you can't take an addict and be like, hey, I want you to be sober. Um, you know, here's the tools to to be sober. They have to choose to want that. Mm -hmm. So I chose to want to be there. I wanted to be successful, but I also wanted to set an example for my kids. I didn't want my kids to be um, seeing me every day in an office, not their home, cooking dinner. I wanted to show them that if you push through, you can reach your goals. Yeah. So and that's awesome. important as a mom because the kids are watching, right? Right. Um, everything you say, everything you do, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. So it's important for them to see that they can have it all, do it all, but that there's way, times where the kids are going to come first and there's times where the kids have to understand that you have to focus on business. Um, and that's an important thing. That's why, like, as our kids have gotten older, we've kind of involved them in what we do and why we do mm -hmm. it so that they understand. And that's some of the things I see some big, like, influencers out there and, and business people that their kids are involved so they understand mm -hmm. why the parents doing what they're doing for the future, you know, yeah. because it does. It, when you watch, you know, you, you, you get the guilt and the shame of like, oh, I'm not there. I couldn't mm -hmm. show up. So, yeah, it's um, it is, you know, balance, like they say, balance is like a myth. But there is a time where things that I hate to use the word, but things are bleeding. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't make it home that night, but then you're going to make sure you're home the next two nights. Yeah. And, and it's that kind of juggling act that time blocking is so you know, important yeah. in this yeah. career. Yeah. So important. But without risk, there's no gain. So yeah, you got to yeah. figure out where Absolutely. where's your calculated risks, you know. Yeah. So I love setting that example for my kids, especially my oldest. You know, she's a preteen. She's getting into those important years where you know you're feeding who they're going to be. You're creating sure. them. Yeah. You know, and you want to you want to create strong women. You know, my my oldest is a girl. Um, I want her to be strong. I don't want her to feel like she has to rely on you know somebody else to take care of her. I want her to see, take risks, yeah. and make changes, you know, don't, don't stay stuck. Don't stay stuck in a rut. Um, and this market is crazy right now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, there's a lot of people that feel like you can't be successful in a, in a tough market, but you can don't take no for an answer, figure out a way around it, make sure you have the right connections and resources sure. and keep pushing through. Yeah. And don't do it all on your own, right? right. You yeah. get to have support Utilize at your home team. and at, at work. Yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll get to the current market here uh, in a moment, but <laughs> 
but let the folks know, how, how did you, so when you made the transition uh, into real estate, how did you start to build your business? Because I've been very impressed to see, you know, kind of, we were talking about before we went live here, kind of your growth over the last few years. How did you just get into it and then get leads and start kind of actually then growing a pipeline? Sure. Um, I educated myself. I took advantage of every opportunity that I could find to educate myself. Um, that was how I got plugged in with Women's Council for Realtors. Uh, social media, I think, is a big, huge part of this generation. Um, and utilizing my social media to connect and follow people that were important. Just as I said, you need to sit at the table with the smartest people. On uh, social media, it's important to have role models, uh, mentors, uh, people that you look up to, idolize something that you want to be. Um, it If you look at the world as negative, it's going to give you negative. There's power in, the, in thoughts, power in the tongue. Um, and so I follow people within my church, within my career, uh, to make sure that I'm constantly feeding myself those positive things. Um, so I followed some pretty successful agents on there and I was like, I want to be like that person. Mm -hmm. So I continued to follow what they were doing and kind of mimic some of those things, creating ads, learning how to use Canva, important things in this industry, um, to promote myself, every goal that I reach, everything that I I still continue highlight, you know, your successes because it's important to remind yourself on those down times that you have found success. Mm -hmm. And so highlighting that kind of gives you that motivation to continue to go forward. Right. Um, so through social media, basically, but then also networking. Sure. Um, as I said before, I like to connect with people that are, you know, more successful than me. Um, follow them as mentors and continue to build a relationship with them. Relationships are important. So I did a lot of social media ads. Um, I boost my posts on social media content through Instagram, through Facebook, um, Snapchat, all those things. I continue uh, to connect with people through that. Um, Are you on the new one now? What's it called? Threads? Threads. <laughs> I'm not on it yet, but I am going to it's have like, to be. I'm another like, one. Okay, oh, another my gosh. Coming. <laughs> gosh. I'm like Facebook. That's like uh, my like, thing. Facebook, you know? too. I like. I, that's my most. That's my biggest thing. Yeah. Um I think it's more user friendly, especially with the older generation. Right. So, you know, when it comes to yeah. listings, you're going to find a lot of yeah. leads through there uh, for me. So I guess I'm part of the older generation then, right? I, if, I mean, if I don't want to. I'm in my 30s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in my 40s. Um, so. But yeah, so. He, he's on the 40s going into the 50s. <laughs> I'm in the mid 40s. But anyways. So I, uh, I connected through networking um, through a friend of mine uh, on Facebook and I got into Women's Council for Realtors. Um, that gave me a lot of educational benefits, sure. um, coaching opportunities uh, for myself to be able to be coached. Um, and that put me with a lot of resources to be able to provide my clients. And the more, um, sometimes it's not always what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. And um, so having those connections to be able to better service my clients, uh, built my own reputation through all of that. And each, uh, each client that I helped, I was like, can you put a review for me? I need a review. Um, I took a educational class one time. Uh, they said, people like real people's reviews, whether right. it be video, whether it be written, um, real experience. When you go on Amazon, you're shopping for, you know, a tool or whatever it is that you're looking for, you're going to read the reviews. You know, right. was, is this good quality? And same thing goes with agents. Is, yeah. Are you, are you going to give me good service? Um, are you going to help me reach my goal? And so having those reviews really helped. So I constantly shared that, which gave me more referrals and just helped me to continue to grow. Yeah, but I that's awesome. I, I think 80% of the realtors out there don't think about that and about how important it is to make sure that you have, you know, good reviews online and, you know, you have, because, you know, people want to do business with people that they, you know, can trust and that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. with. So you mentioned uh, Women's Council of uh, Realtors. So you actually kind of then got into more of the leadership role, correct? Yes, yes. I'm on the board for the vice president of 2024 for West Volusia. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes, vice president. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So so, you, so you're on that, on that board. Mm -hmm. You're doing real estate, mother of three, and then you're also getting into coaching now? Coaching the CW properties, yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Cool. I want to help other agents. My passion in real estate really comes from helping other people. Yeah. We're not doctors, but we play a huge role in um, helping people to really achieve the American dream right. or take that next step in their American dream. Yeah. So, you know, not all clients are first-time homebuyers. You know, right. some people are looking to level up or level down, you know. Um, I love the opportunity to be able to be a part of that memory 
for my clients. Um, there's always bumps in the road, but I think how you handle it really sets your reputation and those referrals. Right. Um, but being able to have the opportunity just to be there for them, it's it's humbling. It's on. Right. It's an honor to be able to be chosen to be that in that yeah. memory. Um, and so I always make sure my clients know that, that I appreciate them choosing me, you yeah. know, out of uh, this, there's tons of agents yeah. out there, Sure. you know? Yeah. Another big mistake, you know, realtors make is that they don't, you know, thank their clients. They don't show the appreciation, yeah. you know? So, uh, that's also very important. So, so talk to us about today's market, right? It's easy, <laughs> right? It's a piece of cake oh, now, right? Deals no. are just falling on our lap. No. It's like, you know. So I've spoken to other agents and they've said, yeah. you know, last year was the hardest year. I'm like, you haven't seen nothing yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah why? You think it's going to get worse or you think it's... <laughs> no, right. no, it's just this year where it is at, you yeah. know, where everything's been at this year. Uh, I do see prices leveling out a little bit more as rates increase. Prices are kind of coming down when the rates were decreased. Prices were really up there competitive. Right. People were biting each other's heads off to get into right. properties. Yeah. Um, I think that each area has its own market, obviously, but what I'm seeing right now is... People are afraid of the rates, but what I always tell people is you can always refinance and reduce your rate, sure. but you cannot reduce your loan amount. Yeah. And with prices where they are right now, they're the best that they've been in a while. Yeah. Um, when clients come to me, I tell them that. Yeah. You're not stuck with this rate and you're not stuck at this payment. Refinance later on and sure. you know if, you're, if this is your top budget right now and you refinance next year, you're going to be even more comfortable where you are. Yeah. So, And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about it that way. Yeah. I mean, listen, just looking at some of the data out there, I mean, it's it's old school economics, right? Mm -hmm. Supply and demand. So because still, right, because rates have obviously gone up, less people are wanting to move because why am I going to leave my, you know, three, four percent yeah. interest rate? Right? But why I never I, look you know? at it that way. I know. I mean, but and but, but, but also but a lot of the consumers. The average, yeah, 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 we the are. Rates, the rates are still below what the yeah. average is. I mean, yes, yeah. they're still below. Yeah. 100%. But people are shocked because yeah. they, they dropped them so significantly. Well, all right, because they, they get, mean, you know, we all get spoiled like, you know, the yeah. good old days, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but because of supply and demand, you know, I mean, I think prices are definitely, I, I don't think they're going to go down much more if no, they've gone out at all right in in certain markets so yeah i mean I it's, if, if you want to get into a home i think prices actually believe it or not i was shocked that i know last time when we had the big downtime in the market back in the crazy 2008 2009 time uh miami south florida got annihilated miami dade county actually showed appreciation you know which totally kind of you know shocked me a little bit so um i think it's going to be you know interesting to see how you know things kind of play out but i think the biggest thing is just kind of really just getting your mindset in the right yeah. place and you know i see a lot of realtors just make the mistake of just hearing stuff on social media or or whatever you you know news is being put out there and so on and and you know there's a lot of neg negativity sells right? yeah positivity doesn't and so when there's negative news out there people just grasp onto it and they just let it affect their mindset and i get so many realtors that are like oh my gosh this market this market i'm like you know what we were talking offline before we got started about one of your goals is, you know, in essence, to get into Blue Diamond, mm -hmm. right? So in Blue Diamond within La Rosa, there's a, a specific criteria you have to hit. You have to hit, you know, a total of 6 million in total sales or 20 units. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, or actually last year now, because we're in 2023, so 2022, everybody thought was like horrendous. We actually had more Blue Diamond mm -hmm. members yeah. now yeah. than we did in 2021 when things were a lot better. Right? I so, sold a lot in the Tampa area yeah. last year, and when I did the looked up the statistics, Tampa was the number one area that was the most challenging to sell, yeah. and that was my biggest year. Yeah, and, and I, you I can't buy into it. It. yeah, like yeah. you say, buy into everything that they're putting out there on the news. There's always people moving. People always have to move, and, and our state is very desirable right now. So mm -hmm. people are coming, and they're not. Rate is not going to make their decision whether they're going to mm -hmm. come or not. So it really goes back to specializing in real estate, not just doing it to close a deal here mm -hmm. and there as like a part-time job. It's it's like when it's your full-time job, it's your career, you're actually knowing the communities, knowing the areas, and with the networking and the marketing, you're going to pull in the right people. Right. Um, because right. There's, there's people that are always going to have to downsize or upsize and move from state to state. So it's really mm -hmm. just getting your marketing in gear and really showing people what you know about well, it. Well, outside of being a realtor, people always have a problem. There's always something going on in everybody's life. Nobody lives this perfect life. Right. And going back to what I said before, it's always who you know, not what you know. Yeah. And if you have someone that can help a connection somewhere, a network of, of, you know, a team somewhere, somebody that can help that person, all you have to do is tell them, hey, hold on. 
don't continue to go down that tunnel because I think I have somebody that can help you out with that situation. Yeah. Um, so I think outside of just selling someone a house or a home, you can help this relation, this career is built on relationships. Yeah. And if you can help a person out, you're just bonding with that person. You're right. building a stronger relationship. So um, a lot of us as agents, we go in, we're thinking, okay, we're just going to help them buy a home. But that's not always necessarily true. I've had families that, you know, they want to buy a house, but it's Christmas time and they're struggling. Oh, I got a friend down at Toys for Tots. I know that I can, that can help you out. Give me a second. Let me help you out with that so that you're able to reach your goal and still be able to give your children a Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always, it's always something going on, just sure. helping people. Um, Beyond the transaction. Right. My yeah. pastor said, uh, everybody, everybody wants the money. Nobody wants the test, but that's why they call it testimony. God gives us our test so that we can go through these challenges to speak of his greatness. I hope it's okay. That I'm yeah, saying. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. sure. I thought it might be passing. No, 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 no. Um, so we always go through our challenges so that we can speak of his greatness. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, so being able to give, share somebody else's successful story is going to inspire somebody else. Sure. Um, and being able in this career, we have the opportunity to give people um, faith to believe beyond just their finances of what they're looking at. Right. You know, real estate has a lot to do with finances and people think, oh, I can't, I can't get there. I can't do this, you know, and giving somebody faith and something to believe in and the tools to be able to succeed and guidance you're going to see more success and that all yeah. goes back to your, Absolutely. to your reputation. Yeah. yeah. You said something earlier about like what people focus on. And it's true. Like a lot of times, especially with what, what's going on in the world, people focus on what they can't control. So they wake up kind of discouraged about what's going on in the world and the economy or whatever it is, instead of focusing on what they can do, mm -hmm. they can do in their business as a human being, you know, and, and their, whatever their sphere is. So mm -hmm. it's important to like get your mind right in that sense. Um, because at the end of the day, right. Um, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot of change you can make and we can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. Right. Um, and what we do for a living, but also like you were saying, outside of just a transaction. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I got two more questions for you. So I'm going to give them to you both so you can start thinking about maybe the answer for the, uh, for okay. the next one. Cause you already kind of <laughs> answered it. <laughs> you know, no, they're, they're, it's, it's easy. And, and we were, and, and listen, we were, we were joking before we went live is that, by the way, Caitlin did not get a script. She then I got a list of questions. Yeah. I told her, I said, hey, listen, it's real talk. We're just yeah. going to talk. Um, and, and we wanted, obviously, you to be able to kind of share your story because we think it's a great example. It's a testimony, right, yeah. that you can give right. to kind of hopefully really inspire some others that are out there. I hope um, somebody gets inspired. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so here are two questions. So one is, um, first one is going to be, what do you do every single day, especially kind of like in this challenging market, to get yourself like ready, like focused, you know, like to flip that switch, how do you get yourself kind of in that mindset of, all right, let's go out there and the time to, you know, perform, right? Go out there and just do my job. That's the first question. Second question, which just give you some time to think about an answer, <laughs> is what's a piece of advice that you can maybe give to any of our listeners that are out there right now? Okay. And want to get into real estate. Well, first off, on a day-to-day, -day, my first thing is securing my kids. Yeah. You know, as a mom, I can't move forward if my kids are not you know, right. good. So I take care of my children. Um, and then as soon as I drop my kids off, that's my go time. Yeah. Um, I immediately check my emails um, and immediately check social media. I think everybody kind of says, you know, what's the first thing you do when you wake up, you roll over your check your phone. Um, that's pretty standard and typical, I think, today in our American life. <laughs> I would say so. Yes. <laughs> Notifications are always the first thing. Yes, yes. Um, so Take care of the kids. Check it. Check all that. Make sure that anybody that's waiting on a response for me has a response. Um, I haven't lately. I've been slacking, but gym would be my next thing. Is like I got to get my mind right. Um, right. It's therapeutic. You know, you think about your day. You you. It kind of gives you that boost of energy that you need to say, okay, this is this is what I need to get done today. Sure. Um, and then I immediately do social media. Um, social media is probably my biggest growth. My biggest. Um, it's your, I think it's my way of connecting with the world. So I constantly am uh, feeding into paying for leads or boosts my posts. Um, and then I constantly have a lead that's coming in from there, which right. pretty much every day it gives me somebody to talk to. Right. I mean, there's some people that get nothing out of it. But for me, I've always got something coming in, um, which means that I'm basically lining up a client for the next few months. You know, if there's somebody that needs help with something, get them connected on their path to get ready and then um, follow up with them. Right. Um, once a week, I have a, a database, a list, a CRM 
um, of those people that needed a little bit of help to reach their goal, right. um, follow up with them. Um, following up is important. I try to keep it on my list as well at the end of my day to make sure I'm following up with past clients, checking on them. I have a client that um, had a parent that had Alzheimer's. I checked in on on them to see how they're doing. Um, a client that wanted to do a whole bunch of remodeling on their house, I check in with them. Hey, is there anything you know that I could do, a connection that I can give you for any repairs that you're working on in your house this week? Right. Um, following up. Emails, um, communication, communication, communication. This career requires so much communication. Um, sometimes when I when I need a break, I'm like, I just need to disconnect from my phone. Yeah, yeah. I'm always on my phone. My <laughs> three-year-old son learned how to talk, and he's like, Mommy's on a work call. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh, yeah. that's what my son is learning to say, at, you know, when he's first learning to talk. Um, <laughs> my my whole family teases me about that one. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I constantly am on my phone checking in, texting, calling. Um, but I have my my calendar day time blocked so right. that I have time for my clients that are future clients, time for past clients, time for social media, you know, um, making a post. Uh, and I make a post on every single platform. Any agent that is starting out now, I'm telling you, social media. Sure. Make sure that you're posting on all of your yeah. platforms. Sure. Be a part of every single one. Twitter, Twitter. Um, Snapchat, Instagram, the new one that we just said. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. It's your connection with the world. Um, but I, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that. But yeah. I, I time block and make time for each of those. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the day, I also make time for my children. And I keep that time separate for them. Um, dance, therapies, doctor's appointments, whatever it is towards the end of my day, I always make time for my kiddos. Um, and then obviously time for my husband too because yeah. – I'm married, love my kids, yeah, love yeah. my husband. So, yeah. So yeah. the only thing I, I hear in there that needs to be added is that little bit of time for you. Yeah, you're right about yeah. that. Whether it's, like you said, gym. whether it's meditating I mean. <laughs> or going to the gym or yeah. taking a walk by yourself, being with your own thoughts or yeah. whatever. But, yeah. I do need important. to make more time for myself. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. I like to feed into other people, though. That's my passion is Well, and that's people. probably something that's therapeutic for you. Yeah. It sounds like that. You're everything you're paying it forward, just sharing all of your knowledge, your experience, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, right? What you feed in is what you get out. That's right. So I, I feel like if I continue to feed into my business for my children, setting that example, when it's my time to retire, my children are gonna be able to take the baton and do what they need to do. So I wanna set that example for them. Awesome. I wanna be there for them. Awesome. So the advice, social media and time blocking? Yes, time Must. management is so important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I would say uh, that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Uh, I've, I've probably, I think I've already discussed a couple of challenges that realtors have. <laughs> that's probably another one is yeah. just managing your time, right? Because, yeah. you know, folks that are going from a nine to five maybe position, now that being independent, it's you, you know, you got to be responsible you get for distracted. Yeah, what you're going to be doing throughout the day. You have to coordinate and so on. So, you know. And things always come up, right? right. So, In the beginning, I was yeah. saying my oh, kids, yeah. like, I wanted to be there for them. Yeah. But by time blocking, I can be there for them. Yeah. Even yeah. though this career is demanding, if you set the time, you'll be yeah. able to be there. Then when things come up, like you were saying, you'll be able to, you know, maneuver things, just change, yeah. you know, change your day around a little bit. Yeah, you have to be able to shift because something's always going to come up, especially as a mom. Someone gets sick, someone calls you crying, you have to take the time to, like, listen to what they're saying. You can't say, I'm sorry you're upset, but I have to go to a meeting. You have to balance that, and it's rough, so... But time blocking helps you because I always time block a little bit of empty space just so when those other things happen, other things can shift and I could still, yeah. you know, get through. Um, let the folks that are out there know, you know, where can they find you on social media? Um, Facebook is my biggest one. So Caitlin Santiago, Central Florida Realtor, because I primarily focus in Central Florida. Okay. I'll sell a house anywhere, but yeah. Central Florida. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, Instagram, I'm uh, XKDZ23 um, and then Snapchat's the same. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. Or you can just Google me. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> Reviews there, are there. There you go. Awesome. Well, we appreciate, again, you coming on and being part of Real Talk. And uh, hopefully everyone was inspired today. And I know we were. Yeah, sure. So so thank you again for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you congratulations for, for everything, for being able thank to do you. it all and really just giving back and, yeah. and putting family first. Yeah. Thank you. So that's uh, this week's episode of Real Talk with Joe and Dina. We appreciate all of you for watching. And we'll be seeing you here real soon. Take care.